Every 12 full moons, I get the urge for a drastic change. And this time, it's gonna be my hair. Hair. Huh? What? No, I don't think you understand. Oh. <laughs> okay. But deciding on the perfect hair look can feel like an insurmountable task. I hate doing shit and not perfecting it. You're confused. I'm confused, bro. Listen. Like, my, my. So first, we gotta do some research. So I've been going through a lot of changes recently, more on that in a later video, but I also want to change my hair. I want to stay fresh. I want to stay clean. Now there's this theory going around called hair theory that's taking the internet by storm. So what is hair theory? Well, according to this document, hair theory explains that the early humans started to develop full heads of hair because- Huh? Oh wait, that that's the wrong hair theory. Okay, TikTok hair theory, okay. Here we go. Hair theory is a theory that states people will perceive you, make you out to be a certain type of way, or categorize you depending on your hairstyle. Seems more like a hypothesis than a theory anyway, but regardless. It says that people with darker hair are less approachable. <gasps> and to be honest, I like it that way. Can I give you a hug? No thanks. Please? No thanks. A little one. Yeah, no thanks. However, I do want to be approachable on the YouTubes. I want you to see that thumbnail with me in it and be like, ooh, she's mysterious. She's entertaining. She's capturing my attention. I'm going to click on that video, obviously, because I want you guys to all be here to hang out with me. I want you to see my thumbnails and think, hmm. I want to click on her video. I want to know what she's about. Then there's also this creator called Kokomo that talks about Hollywood hair theory, which is a little bit different. They theorize that if you have a very unique hair look, you are more likely to take off in your career. And I think the more recognizable, the more you are likely to take off. So some examples of this are Freddie Mercury, Slash, Hannah Montana, Billie Eilish, Ice Spice, and most recently, Chapel Roan. I'm gonna take the glasses off now. We don't need those anymore. I'm also noticing amongst these celebrities that a particular style can also help with recognition. For example, you guys have all seen Sabrina Carpenter. While her hair color is quite basic, blonde, a lot of people have blonde hair like that, the styling of her curtain bangs being so fluffy and the little blowout that she always has and the consistency of that look for her has created this true recognizability and a brand that she has. She always kind of has this look going on. Another example of this, Brooke Schofield, she's like a YouTuber, she does the canceled podcast with Tana and she does TikToks as well. She has a very identifiable look with her hair always being slicked back, particularly in a slicked back bun or ponytail. I feel like I wouldn't recognize her without that slicked back look. This creator says that they can predict with a high accuracy who will become famous. And while I'm not trying to change my hair just to become famous, it is intriguing that possibly that could help with my YouTube and being able to do this full time eventually. So speaking of YouTubers, let's look at some YouTubers that I like and what they're willing to do to experiment with their hair and how they have, let, how they have hair. Let's just look at their hair, okay? Let's look at them, shall we? Ethan Klein, probably arguably my favorite YouTuber. I think he is the most experimental with his hair out of any YouTuber. He has gone completely shaved, shaved off the eyebrows even, he's done flowers in his hair, like dyed into his hair. He has done the ramen hair of the uh, Justin Timberlake era. This man is not afraid of experimenting with his look and I think that is inspirational because I'm being a baby and I'm very scared. I have never really changed my hair. I've had this dark brown for pretty much my whole life. I did highlights once and that's pretty much it. So I need to get out of my shell. I need to get out of my box. I need change. I need something different. Another example of a YouTuber that I absolutely love and cannot get enough of is Jenna Marbles. I'm sad that she's gone, but while she was making YouTube videos, she was always willing to experiment with her hair and try fun looks and make videos where she was doing different things with her hair. And that was always super inspiring to me. Also made me want to get in there and do stuff to my hair. I'm glad I didn't do anything. I only trust my stylist with my hair. I don't want to do anything myself and make mistakes unless I'm like trimming bangs. That's all I'll do. And then lastly, for YouTubers that I'm kind of inspired by, for this are Mia Maples. She is a little sweetie pie from Canada, the other side of Canada than me, but she is so sweet. She has a lot of videos where she's doing her own hair, making huge changes to her hair. She ended up collabing with Brad Mondo, who is an 
icon and that is such a goal I can't believe that she was able to do that so I think I'm kind of noticing a through line between these creators that I like and a trend and they're not afraid to experiment they're not afraid to go crazy with their look and they make content around their hair that's really fun and something that I want to do because I want to have fun on my channel this is my channel to play and do whatever I want and have fun and I want to make a hair video damn it and so that's what we're gonna do today that is what you're here for I'm really feeling like there's something to the whole branding thing of having a signature look and a signature brand with your hair I do branding in my personal life outside of YouTube and having brand recognition is really important and having brand colors that are unique to your brand is really important too and so that's kind of where color comes in and where I'm starting to think about color for my hair so color theory let's talk about color theory <laughs> i'm not letting this art degree go to waste baby i spent enough money on it i better know how to talk about color theory all right i am as you can see very pale i have blue eyes and i have freckles so i want to pick a hair color that is going to be really flattering to this I used to always want to go really really dark uh like i already have quite naturally dark hair and if i were to do something i would just go extra dark but that might wash me out a bit, which is, I liked that look before, but now I'm feeling like wanting to do something that will brighten up my whole look and be very vibrant and eye-catching, but that works with my pale features. Okay, another reason why I want to make this change is outfit inspiration. I'm not as excited about getting dressed or making clothes lately, and I'm not sure why. I feel like I'm really feeling stuck in a rut with my style, and I think changing my hair will help, maybe give me some more inspiration on things to make, or just how to style the clothes I already have and then I also want this hair look to add to my outfits I feel like sometimes my hair is just like the last thing I think about or it's not styled great and that brings me to the next point is style inspiration I just don't have the love and the effort to do anything to my hair lately I just can I just I'm bored of it I don't want to touch it I don't want to do fun things with it hair is something I neglect and so I think if I do something really fun and exciting with my hair I'll want to put that effort in to making it look gorgeous every day because I spent all this money and time making it perfect and beautiful I want to spend more time on my hair. I need to get reinvigorated, re-inspired about my hair. And it's also very healthy. As you can see, I don't do anything much to it. I haven't done much to it in a long time. She can handle some abuse Ooh. because she is very healthy <laughs> right now. So I think she's gonna be okay if we abuse her a little bit. So I've been wanting to do red hair forever and I've been such a baby about it. Like this has been ongoing for years i've been talking about doing red and i've been talking about doing different shades of red whether it's dark kind of maroony or lighter but this has been on my mind for a very long time and i want it to look like i'm a natural ginger once it's done and i think it'll work well with my features like i'm so excited i'm so excited to try this i have not done anything crazy with my hair before or different and some of you guys might not think this is a very crazy change but for me this is a very big change so i'm really excited to do this so it's time to go to the hairdresser time. i have been waiting for this i want this i need a change Hi, tis done. I am back. You can see the results. Safe to say, I'm, I'm obsessed. obsessed. I absolutely love it. I can't stop looking at my hair. Obviously, I styled it today because it's been a couple days since I got it done. So I actually just washed it for the first time and styled it and I already had more motivation to style it. And then as far as color and how flattering it is, I think it looks really good with my skin tone and everything blends really well and it's very flattering. So I'm really happy with the color. My stylist is obviously a gem and she did such an incredibly amazing job. So I pretty much couldn't be happier with how it turned out. I think it's so amazing. And I already feel so much more confident. I feel like this was the change that I really needed to just feel like myself again and have fun. I feel like sassier too. I don't know if that's crazy, like, but yeah, I, I think hair does affect your personality and then in turn it will affect how people treat you. So there, I think there is something to hair theory. Now onto astrology. I've seen a lot of people on TikTok talk about how you should dress according to your Venus sign. And apparently that's supposed to make 
make you look really attractive, whatever, whatever. I figured this out after I already got my hair dyed, but turns out my Venus sign is Leo. And I feel like that works really well with the red mane, obviously. I definitely noticed people were looking at me more and just like smiling at me more. And I went to the pet store to get some litter for Luna and the girl was like so nice and helpful. And she's like, oh my gosh, like, do you need any help? Like, okay, like have such a great day, love. Like, I think she called me love and I was like, okay, slay. Feeling very good, but I think a lot of that could be to do with the fact that I was really feeling myself and I was feeling very confident and so I was walking with a lot of confidence. So I think that could definitely factor in to how people perceive me. That's the experiment. Is it really an experiment? We haven't really experimented anything, but now we wait, I guess. Now we see, maybe I'll update with a different video and talk about if I've noticed any differences. But so far, so good. And I'm super happy with the results. Let me know if you guys think this was fun. That's pretty much this week's video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.